Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to create these boxes, and I'm just going to make this one right here. Uh, so just take a look at it. You can see that I have got uh, decoration on this. This is a slight variation that you'll see how to make. And uh, these are original designs. I hope you enjoy following along. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start with the color side down. I have a sheet of paper here. I've just lightly colored one side so that you can see that. And this is the side that shows up most prominently on the inside. So we're going to start with that. We're going to crease into thirds first. In both directions. This will form the base of the box. And many of the designs I do start with this preliminary setup with uh, creasing in thirds. And then we're going to crease the corner to the opposite one-third mark, like so. And you'll notice that Once I get this uh, part, you're going to begin to see the, 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 how the box is going to form. On the back side, we're going to take the corner and crease it to the near one-third. And then I'm just going to crease this little rim like so. Repeat this for all four corners. <clears throat> now I'm going more quickly than you would normally go. So this is not a beginner box. Uh, it's something that you would do after you have been folding for a little while. And I've got a number of other tutorials that will show you how to fold preliminary boxes, a little bit simpler things to get going. Um, at this stage of the game, we're going to um, crease a one third uh, along these edges here. We're going to crease a diagonal or it's really it's it's straight with the paper at 90 degree and I'm going to do that just by folding in half like so I'm not creasing all the way through just this top little portion here same thing on the bottom just getting that and same thing right here just that one little section And then all of these are going to become mountains right at the triangle here. So I'm just going to flip this over. This just makes it a little bit easier when you go to form the foundation of the box. In other words, we did have a um, valley fold there, and now we have a mountain fold. And this is the structure that it makes. If you just kind of look all the way around this. So you can begin to see what the box is going to look like, like so. And the question is, what holds that together? How, how can those pieces stay together? How can they stay and not flop open like that? And the answer is, on the back side, we're going to have a little lock. And you'll notice on the back that you have a little indented piece here. What we're going to do is we're going to, exactly in half, we're going to take this mountain edge and crease it to the middle. And you know where the middle is because we we creased along that middle so that you could see it. There's no other purpose for that fold in there other than to see where the middle is. And so if you look at it on the back side, it looks like this. Have like a little kite looking structure there. And what we're going to do is crease this down in half, straight in half, and then confirm the whole thing like that. So let's do the same thing on each of these others. Now I find it easier if you just uh, do 
the same step on all of the sides and then um, and then sort of bring it together all at once at, at the end. So I will, I will get the uh, this little triangle in half. Like that. I'll do the same thing for all four sides. Okay, so now we're going to, I've got all four sides of this uh, creased in that little kite shape on the back. And we're just going to go to each side and then and directly crease this triangle straight down, turn it over, and then just confirm that crease through all the layers. And when you proceed around to each side, you'll notice that this box gets stronger and it gets more uh, solid where it's not going to open up. So these, this is a, a type of lock. Um, it's sort of a surface tension lock, which is very popular in uh, origami. It allows the paper's surface tension or the scratchiness of it, the sort of the roughness of the paper, becomes part of the uh, quality that holds the lock and so it won't flop open because it's got a lot of surface tension there. Alright, so after the last one is in place, it pretty much looks done. Um, the last piece that I do is there's a little flap here that I've left and there's a little bit of a raw edge right there and we're just going to crease it under exactly in half. And depending on how your paper is behaving, um, you don't necessarily have to crease it. You can kind of leave it a little bit round if you like, which I like that uh, quality. And this last step, um, again, just makes the box hold together and gives it a very firm um, rim. Just sort of roll it under and tuck it and you'll know just uh, just where to stop because the paper will uh, stop at the uh, at the mountain fold in there and this is the final piece and you can see that we started with a color side up so that's where the surface uh, is colored on the inside and then the outside or the back would be this other color um, and that is the final result this box is called the alley box and you can find more information on my website foldthisbox.com where I have diagrams and other information about learning origami how it's good for the brain and helps stimulate thinking and creativity so I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial